In one of my Photoshop schools, I kind of talked about the concept of print and I was demonstrating a personal project of mine, which is Marmite, you know, you either like it or you don't. Uh, but it's basically black and white uh, images and then applying some blur techniques to the image to give it a little bit more of motion, kind of move, uh, move movement and take it away from what is just a portrait. And um, I was using the path blur, but I, I use it in a very specific way um, for the project. Um, however, there's much more to the path blur um, than basically what I was showing to you. So uh, this is one of the images, but if I just kind of quickly uh, just uh, take the image here and I duplicate it, Control J, you'll know by default, I usually work in black and white with this and I usually use it uh, through either channel mixer or I actually apply a gradient map to it. If you are gonna use gradient map, of course, remember to hit D for default before you do it. That resets the colors over on the left-hand side here. Anyway, um, once I've kind of got a black and white image, I then right click the layer and I basically invert it to a smart object no matter what. And if you are gonna use any of the blur tools, the blur galleries or kind of real effect in the image, I would make sure it is a smart uh, layer or smart object um, because you wanna kind of go back and tweak it and adjust it and so on. Then I go up into filter in the blur, but I don't want the basic blur, I want the blur gallery. Coming across here, second from the bottom is path blur. And then by default, basically it starts with this arrow immediately in the image, which you can kind of uh, uh, change its kind of position, the way that the blur will happen. We can bend it by clicking onto the white dot in the middle and kind of moving that into a shape as well. And obviously we can move its starting point at any stage. And better still, we can basically add more and more of these by just clicking and dragging and then moving them in exactly the same way. I also demonstrated that I usually kind of set this into the rear sync flash. Um, so this is kind of where the exposure for the person is done at the end. So at the start of the exposure, it's just drag. And at the end is where we actually see the detail as such. So if I click it into rear uh, sync there, we can see that there's a difference to the image. If I just move this image backwards, let me slide the uh, other dots and basically we kind of move in this way, we get more of our kind of detail running through here. Um, so that, besides the kind of the moving of the speed tool, yes, the speed in way that it kind of moves across the path, and that's where I was kind of stopping as far as the image is concerned. But there's more to the path blur than just that. What do I mean? So the first thing that we we can do is uh, click onto the strobe strength so we can kind of move it more and more. And this is where you start to see the rear curtain or the second curtain sink kind of uh, start to play its game more. And you can obviously use the amount of flashes within the image. That'll give you like a pulse in of the amount of times you're seeing the, the photograph as it kind of moves across the scene. Better still though, we can also, if I just move the uh, speed blur quite a lot and uh, just go in closer to the image, just do the control plus so you can see what it is. If I was to drag a, another uh, line down, say through the middle here, um, you can see it pretty much kind of corrects itself. Let's move the strength of the strobe back so we've got more of a, blur, a blurred image. But if we click on the edit blur shapes, you'll see that you've got these red arrows begin to uh, apply. And this is where we can start to uh, adjust the way that it reacts. One of the quickest tips is if you press control and you click on the dot at the top, and you press control and you click on the dot at the top of the arrow, you'll find that that will actually give you a clear effect. So that is like a protected mask area then uh, of how it kind of works uh, within the uh, image itself. So you can see by kind of me just bringing this down into the position, it kind of re-renders each time, um, but it's kind of protecting the girl's face. So if you do want to, 
have more control of protecting the likes of a face or a product or whatever it is, but you still like this fluid blur, then you can use the edit technique as such, okay? Once you've kind of done with it, obviously if you want a high quality, which I usually want, just click on the high quality and then I will actually press the okay to kind of accept the blur. Now, of course, one of the benefits of having the likes of a smart object is that I can double click it and basically um, uh, change the effect or switch fully the effect off. So by clicking on the blur little eye, then I'm switching it off. Yes, switching it on again is giving us the effect. It'll just take it a couple of uh, seconds to reapply the actual smart blur. It's a lot of work going on within the path blur itself. So we get this lovely kind of um, edginess to the image. You know, for for me at this stage, I would then actually go into Control J to duplicate it. I would go into mul Multiply to darken. I would then actually add a mask to the side. And at this point, B for brush, D for default. X to put black on top, and then I would actually start to paint back some of the areas that I want, some of the detail back and everything else with it. And I continue to work on it in that way. So let's look at it with a different image. You know, this is just a guy sat down on a box. It's an uninteresting kind of headshot kind of uh, shot, but with the path blur, we can make it uh, a lot more dramatic. We don't need to make it into a smart object. The benefit of the smart object is remember, I can double click onto the smart blur and it goes back and it allows me to move any of these items uh, that I want to actually change with the image. Pressing OK will update it again. I should have pressed cancel. <laughs> that would have been a lot quicker, wouldn't it? But you get what I mean. But let's look at the uh, other guy for a minute. I'm just going to shut that one down. We don't need it. Um, so we've got our guy here. and We don't need to duplicate the image. We can work straight away with filter, blur gallery, and work on the path blur here, okay? But as a rule, I would encourage you, even if you don't want to actually do it as a smart over object, at least duplicate your layer. And all I did there was control J. Or of course, I could have just dragged the background layer down to the plus next to the bin and that would have duplicated it. Right, let's go into filter, blur gallery, and we click onto the path blur. So you can see by default, it remembers the last settings that I was on as far as the edit is concerned. But if I click that off for now, you'll see that the red um, arrows kind of are missing at this point. We can see that the speed is working. Let's bring the strobe down more. Yes. So we can see that the uh, speed is there. And what we're going to do is push this more. And let's say we don't want him to be blurred, but we want his hand to be blurred. So let's kind of um, just do it in this way for a minute. Let me just uh, in here. We'll click onto this original one and we'll just hit the delete to get rid of it. At this point, this is the blur that we've got kind of the position and the rotation with it. And let's uh, fix the shoe. So in other words, remember at this stage, what we want to do is try and refix it. So in other words, if I bent the curve back again, it will start to bring us back some of the original de uh, detail because I'm working in the opposite direction to the first curve that I did. However, the better way to preserve the detail, of course, is to click into the edit blur, click into the end, press the control key, and then basically on both ends, and that will preserve that part of the image. So in the same way, if I want to do the face, I kind of just draw a line through it. I control click at the top, control click the bottom of it as well. And that will bring me back a sharpness to the face once more. So you can see that the curve here is affecting the curve in this direction. The curve on the foot is being fixed. So that's kind of making sure that any adjustments to that image is being controlled. If I want to actually control the hand in a gesture, I can kind of move it in here. And of course, if I want more of a spread, we can move the spread throughout as if he's really waving his hands around and so on with it. So we've got a real motion blur going on. 
Remember um, that you can either use it in the basic blur technique like I just demonstrated here, or we can move it into a rear sync flash where the kind of effect happens at the end. And now you can see the difference in the hands where it looks like there is a, a, a kind of um, a, a sharpness at the end. So just in the basic blur, it just moves the pixels. In the second curtain sync, it's like the flash has gone off at the end and you keep and maintain some sharpness. If you want to kind of taper the image the way that the effect happens, obviously you've got the control here. Uh, so less of a taper will give you more of an effect. More of a taper will control the blur effect as it kind of moves across it. Then we actually move into the strobe strength about how do we want it to kind of affect. And you can see the stronger the strength, it means there's more detail left. So now if I move the spread more, it still maintains the detail actually onto the hands and the fingers here um, because we've moved the strobe strength uh, uh, to the side and things, okay? And then obviously, if you want to add more strobe effects, you would basically add the extra ones in there. So it has like a, a, a kind of a strobe where you see two or three or four or more of the actual um, flashes kind of going off in the way that it blurs itself. So again, remember all we're doing here it was we're basically giving a shape by dragging the arrow direction. We can move the middle point to any position that we want. We can exaggerate the uh, effect. We can elongate it. And of course, we've got that full control to do with the speed. But one of the key things is if you like the idea of keeping the sharpness of the face, then realistically, you want to actually make sure that the points of sharpness that you want, like the face and the foot, is that you went into the edit blur shape and you control clicked onto the two ends of each of those arrows to maintain most of the sharpness within the image. And that's the path blur.